looking forward to uh, our visit, my delegation and my visit to uh, China, which is uh, next weekend. Going to China is always a pleasure. We have a long relationship, over 70 years, and um, it's a deep relationship between the people of Pakistan and people of China. So therefore, it's always a pleasure going there. So I'm looking forward to my visit. So please ask me questions. Today, uh, for as a sp special gift, we present the mascot of uh, Be Beijing Winter Olympics to you. The one sit next to you These is ones? yes. These are the mascots. Yeah, okay. these are the mascot. Okay. And the one next to you is a clumsy icy panda. It's called Bing Dun Dun. And the other one is for Paralympics. It's called Xue Rong Rong. It's a Chinese tra traditional lantern. Okay, I look forward to watching them. Uh, I've yeah. never been to watch any Winter Olympics. In fact, I've never been to any Olympics, so I look forward. Oh, yes, uh, that, that's great. I'm from People's Daily, China. So my questions are all about uh, Winter Olympics. So first one is, in 2021, China and Pakistan celebrate 70 uh, years anniversary of uh, establishment of uh, diplomatic ties. And uh, uh, for uh, now, you are also going to attending the uh, opening ceremony of uh, Beijing Winter Olympics Games. So this is another major event in the development of uh, bilateral relationships. So how do you evaluate the high-level development of uh, Pak-China relationship? Look, uh, the relationship between the, the two countries has just got stronger over a period of time. Uh, and, and one of the main reasons is that uh, Feeling in Pakistan is that China has always stood with us in our times of need. When Pakistan has, uh, over the years, been in a difficult period, China has stood with us, and Pakistan has stood with China. And, and we are neighbors. Uh, I was in school when uh, the, the Karakuram Highway was being built. And that was a collaboration between the Chinese uh, uh, government and the people the Pakistan army. And it was a very difficult venture because the road was very difficult. There were steep mountain sides. Uh, and I remember the number of uh, Chinese who died building the Karakuram Highway. So the relationship is very, uh, it's a deep relationship. And so over a period of time, it has actually got even stronger. And CPAC, of course, has, been, has also linked us uh, the two countries. We know that sports always plays an important role in uh, uniting pe uh, people together. And for this Winter Olympics, it's uh, also a very special time because it is the post-pandemic time. So what uh, expectation do you uh, have when you come to China to attending the opening ceremony of Winter Olympics? What's your expectation of it? Well, firstly, this is the, the first uh, Olympics let alone it's a winter one, but it's the first Olympics I will be uh, ever witnessing. So I look forward to that. And of course, you know, I was a sportsman uh, for almost uh, 20 years of my life. I was an international sportsman. People in China don't play cricket. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, in, as our relationship gets stronger, we will also teach Chinese how to play cricket so that you know, China can also become a, a great cricketing team. Uh, but I look forward because, uh, you know, it's, uh, as a sportsman, it's apart from our relationship, uh, close relationship with, between the two countries, uh, it'll be very interesting for me to see a competition. I have, ever since I've been in politics, I've had no chance to, uh, to watch any sports. Yeah, so uh, what do you think the uh, Winter Olympics means to this uh, post-pandemic era? I think uh, it's, a, it's a very, you know, pandemic has uh, devastated apart from anything else. It's sporting events all over the world have been affected by the pandemic. So in this context, uh, I think it's a very, for, for China to have gone through with the, uh, with the Winter Olympics, I think it's very admirable. Assalamu alaikum Jannab Wazir Azam Sahib. मैं हूं शिनहुआ न्यूज़ एजेंसी की उर्दू सर्विस की जोशु हुआ जैसा कि आपको इल्म है कि गिलगिपल्तिस्तान से तालुक रखने वाले एथलीट मोहम्मद करीम वो बीजिंग 2022 सरमाई ओलिंपिक्स में पाकिस्तान की नुमाइंदगी करेंगे 
हम इन मुकाबलों में पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तानी खिलाड़ी की शरकत का बहुत खैर मुकदम करते हैं आप आपका शुमार दुनिया के बेहतरीन खिलाड़ियों में से एक है आ, मैं पूछना चाहती हूँ कि मुस्तबिल में आप आपकी हुकूमत पाकिस्तान और चीन के दरमियान खेलों के तान को फ़रोख देने में क्या इकदाम करेगी देखिए सबसे पहले तो जो गिलगित बल्तिस्तान का इलाका है और कई पख्तूनख्वा के भी इलाके ऐसे हैं कि वहाँ स्कीइंग के लिए और स्कीइंग मेन चीज़ है विंटर ओलंपिक्स की तो स्कीइंग के लिए बेहतरीन जगह है लेकिन अभी तक पाकिस्तान में हमने कभी सही माने में स्कीइंग के ऊपर तोज्जो नहीं दी बड़ी कम जगहों के ऊपर स्कीइंग होती है तो हमारी कोशिश ये है कि हम ये गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में ख़ास तौर पर स्कीइंग को डिवेलप करें और उसको जब डेवलप करेंगे तो हमारी ये भी कोशिश है क्योंकि चाइना के अंदर ज़्यादा आगे निकल गए हैं ज़्यादा तोज्जो दी जाती है विंटर स्पोर्ट्स की तरफ तो हम सोच रहे हैं कि उनसे फिर कोलेब्रेशन भी करें क्योंकि दूसरी तरफ खुजरा पास की दूसरी तरफ चाइना है और ये कनेक्शन भी उनसे है तो हमारी हम इसके ऊपर भी अब सोच रहे हैं कि पाकिस्तान में पहले तो वैसे स्कीम के ऊपर हम ज़्यादा तोज्जो दें और दूसरा उधर से कनेक्शन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान और चाइना के अंदर उधर भी हम स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर आपस में ज़्यादा मिलाप करवाएँ ज़्यादा कोऑर्डिनेशन करें Thank you, Your Excellency. It's Brody Jiang Chao with Xinhua News Agency. So my question is that uh, you praised China's development development model on many occasions, and we know that China have has developed a, a whole process people's democracy and committed to a people centered approach. However, the United States and the West countries try to impose their democratic model to other countries. So my question is that how do you think of China's Whole process, people's democracy. Thank you. The most uh, impressive thing about China, which is accepted by the entire world now, is that uh, the number almost 700 million people in China have been taken out of poverty in the last 35, 40 years. This is—it's never happened in human history before, and this is what impresses. the entire world about china whether they are in good relationship with china they are on the other side they sort of oppose china but they everyone has to accept that this has never happened in human history before and so if you ask me what impresses me most about china it is this fact because my main objective is somehow to raise people out of poverty in pakistan and so you know when i went to china i specifically I uh, wanted to know the the steps taken for alleviating poverty there uh, and um, and so the reason why I think that the chinese model of uh, development is what we want to emulate is because uh, you know it was an inclusive growth in china when china grew the whole population grew with china it wasn't unfortunately uh, you know like in a lot of uh, the rest of the world where the rich get richer and the poor in fact get poorer the gap between the rich and poor gets wider in fact in pandemic we discovered that the poor people got poorer and the super rich got even richer and so china is a model for all those countries who want to have inclusive growth सर मेरा ताल्लुक एफ एम नाइन्टी एट दोस्ती चैनल से है जैसे कि हम जानते हैं आप हमेशा खेलों और वर्जिश के जरिए सेहतमंद तर्ज ज़िंदगी बरकरार रखते हैं इस हवाले से आप चीनी आवाम को क्या मशवरा देना चाहेंगे चाइना के अंदर ये जो हमने देखा है कि एक तब्दीली आई है चाइना में एक तो लोगों को गुरबत से निकाला उन्होंने लेकिन वो स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर चाइना कभी भी इतना आगे नहीं था दुनिया में जितना अब पिछली दो तीन ओलंपिक्स में चाइना की परफॉर्मेंस बहुत इम्प्रेसिव रही है तो इससे वाज होता है कि वहाँ बड़ी तोज्जो दी जा रही है अब स्पोर्ट्स की तरफ और फिटनेस की तरफ दूसरा मेरा सवाल यह है कि हुकूमत पाकिस्तान मुल्क की तरक्याती हमत अमली को जियो पॉलिटिक्स से जियो इकनॉमिक की तरफ मुंतकिल कर रही है 
پاکستان کی ترقی کے لیے چین پاکستان اسٹریٹجک اور اقتصادی تعاون سے آپ کی کیا توقعات وابستہ ہیں دیکھیں چائنا نے غربت کام کیسے کی چائنا نے غربت ایسے کام کی کہ انہوں نے اپنی اکانومی کو گرو کیا جو گروتھ ریٹ جیسی جیسی ان کی بڑھی تو انہوں نے اس گروتھ ریٹ سے لوگوں کو غربت سے نکالا اگر آپ نے غربت سے لوگوں کو نکالنا ہے تو جب تک آپ کی اکانومی گرو نہیں کرے گی ویلتھ کریشن نہیں ہوگی تو آپ کے پاس کدھر سے پیسہ آئے گا نیچے سے لوگوں کو اوپر اٹھانے کے لیے تو چائنا نے یہی کیا کہ انہوں نے اپنی اکانومی کے اوپر توجہ دی لیکن گروتھ کو پھر جب وہ جب ان کی دولت بڑھی تو انہوں نے یہ نہیں کیا کہ وہ تھوڑے سے لوگوں کے پاس پیسہ چلا گیا پھر انہوں نے وہ نیچے دیا تو ہماری بھی یہی کوشش ہے کہ جو جب ہم جیو اکنامکس کی بات کرتے ہیں تو ہمارا مقصد یہ ہے کہ اب زور ہم نے دینا اپنی اکانومی کو بڑھانے کے لیے اور جیسے جیسے یعنی اس کا یہ نہیں مطلب کہ سیکیورٹی کے اوپر ہم توجہ نہیں دے رہے لیکن ہم خاص توجہ جو ہم نے بدقسمتی سے پہلے نہیں دی اپنی اکانومی کے اوپر توجہ ہماری اب خاص کوشش ہے اکانومی پہ ہم زور لگا رہے ہیں تاکہ جیسے جیسے ملک کے اندر ہماری دولت میں اضافہ ہوگا ہم پھر اپنے لوگوں کو غربت سے نکالیں And uh, my first question is, now, as the new phase of CPAC development focuses on encouraging business and benefiting local people, what is your government going to do to facilitate it? What do you expect for the sustainable development of CPAC? And any expectation for more cooperation on renewable and clean energy? Thank you. Uh, you see, the first phase of CPAC was basically connectivity and power generation. Now the CPEC has moved into the next stages where it's about uh, relocation of industry. We want to develop our industrial zones, our special economic zones. Uh, then we want, especially in agriculture, we, we want uh, help there uh, to increase, improve our productivity. Because in China, the productivity is much higher in, uh, in agriculture and livestock yields compared to Pakistan. So we want help there too. Uh, and then China has grown these uh, drought resistance cotton varieties, which we have large tracts of lands in Pakistan uh, where uh, this variety of cotton can be grown. So that's where we're going to get help from China. But also it's in technology, information te technology. Uh, that's another area where we, which is basically the future is the technological revolution in the world is the future. And China has made great strides in that, and so we also want to uh, get help from China in that field. Thank you. And my second question is, now, some Western countries keep telling lies on so-called Xinjiang issues. But actually, many Pakistani people, scholars, journalists, including Ambassador to China, His Excellency Moin ha, uh, uh, ha, Haq, well, has visited Xinjiang for many times. They saw the place with their own eyes and uh, talked a lot about it. Have you heard of them talking about Xinjiang? And uh, what do you think of lies told by those Western countries? There is a lot of uh, criticism uh, about uh, the treatment of Uyghurs by, uh, by China in the West. But our ambassador went there, uh, Moin ul Haq, who's our ambassador in China, we asked him and He went there and he sent us information that this is actually not true on the ground. But what we in Pakistan find it very difficult to swallow is that while they talk about uh, Uyghurs, they do not talk much in the West about Kashmir. Because in Kashmir, the, the worst violations of human rights are taking place by India. And uh, somehow there is a selective silence about human rights in Kashmir where there's something like uh, uh, nine million people who are you know, really basically living in the worst conditions in almost an open prison by, by these uh, 800,000 Indian troops. So we find it very difficult that while on one side they talk about Sinkiang, but on the other hand there is uh, the silence about uh, Kashmir is deafening for us. And, and that's the double standard is what we in Pakistan find it difficult. Islam alaikum. Uh, I'm Chai Ru from CCTV China Media Group. 
Now my question is, Afghanistan is now facing a serious humanitarian crisis. Do you think that 20 years occupation and irresponsible withdrawal of troops by the U.S. and Western country are the main reason for the situation in Afghanistan? And how should the international community cooperate on Afghan issue? Uh, look, Afghanistan has, um, has suffered for 40 years. And it's always because of outside countries uh, who have uh, made Afghanistan into a battleground. And so 40 years, people of Afghanistan have suffered. And this is now, after 40 years, there's a chance of peace in Afghanistan. Because actually, there is no fighting going on in Afghanistan. And this is you know, after four decades. So what should the international community do? The international community right now should understand that people who have suffered for 40 years, uh, and when the, when the foreign forces have left Afghanistan, they cannot uh, just leave Afghanistan without uh, thinking about the aftermath or how the people of Afghanistan are going to survive from here. Because in 1989, when the Soviets left Afghanistan, so did everyone else, and Afghanistan descended into a civil war. And about almost 200,000 Afghans died. There was chaos in Afghanistan. And from that chaos emerged the Taliban. And now, after 20 years, if everyone abandons Afghanistan, uh, the situation, number one, the people of Afghanistan, and I'm talking about almost 40 million of people of Afghanistan, they are going to. Uh, I mean, you could see the worst humanitarian crisis there. But on top of it, if there is chaos in Afghanistan, then it's possible that the same conditions are created which were created 20 years ago when the, when the US invaded Afghanistan. Sa same thing could happen again if there is chaos. So what should happen is that the international community should just think of the 40 million Afghan human beings there. Whether they like the Taliban government or not should be secondary. The welfare of the people of Afghanistan should be the foremost, and uh, they are facing one of the worst humanitarian crises right now. And they really need uh, help uh, as soon as possible. My next question is, uh, you know, in a few days, the Chinese Lunar New Year will come. What are your wishes for the Chinese Lunar New Year? And what are your expectations for Pakistan-China cooperation in 2022? Well, first of all, let me congratulate the people of China for the Lunar New Chinese Year. So I co congratulate everyone. Um, my expectations are that uh, you know we, uh, we have a relationship with China, which is mutually beneficial to, for both countries. And um, uh, we hope that uh, in this relationship, because we are looking to raise uh, Pakistan's economy and the well-being and ra uh, raising people out of poverty. So we hope that um, we will, uh, you know, we are already learning from the Chinese experience. But there's one thing I forgot to say, which we want to learn from China, is how they have built their mega cities. You see, China has these huge cities now, and, and the way they have uh, dealt with the, the problems that come of having mega cities. You know, and I'm talking about air pollution, I'm talking about um, you know, the, the waste disposal. It's a science to manage a huge city. So we are, unfortunately, our cities are growing at a very fast rate. Pakistan is urbanizing at one of the fastest rates. So we also hope to learn from, uh, from the Chinese experience how they have coped with their, uh, their urban development. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, as Tui said, uh, our Chinese Lunar New Year of Tiger is coming soon. So we hope you also can also express your 
best wishes to our Chinese audience. I want China to give you China's lunar new year. I want to give all the Pakistanis to Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.